All right, my friends, in this video, I'm going to tell you how you can become rich. I'm going to give you a one, two-step process. The first, there are two different ways you can do this, two steps. First step is probably the easier way, but if you stay through the end of the video, I'm going to share with you a secret that only I know about that I'll share with you towards the end. That could The, the second one, a little bit more risky, but hang in there. All right. So you might be wondering, but Josh, you're not rich. You've told us many, many times. So how can you possibly tell us how to get rich if you yourself aren't, kind of sir? That's a great question. And the reason is because I don't have the guts to do what I'm going to share with you. I do not have the guts to do what I'm going to share with you. But if you have the guts, you can get rich following these techniques. It's actually quite simple. And I, I'm telling you, you've seen people in front of your very eyes become wealthy. So let me share with you. So I was reading... The video I did earlier today on why we need to break up Vanguard, all right? And I was reading a quote from everyone's most esteemed favorite uh, former vice president, Al Gore, where he basically was saying that these people, these people have a decision to make if they want to kill people or not. And we all know Al Gore is full, right? Well, we think he is. He comes across like a fool, but Al Gore, he takes care of Al Gore like you wouldn't believe. Yeah, I know he cheated on Tipper. I know he's a hypocrite when it comes to environmentalism. I get all that. But he's wealthy. Now, how did he become wealthy? I mean, think about it. His dad was just a segregationist racist center from Tennessee. Al Gore assumed the mantle when uh, whatever the dad's name was left office. And he assumed similar mantle of uh, being somewhat of a racist senator from Tennessee. And then he said, ah, no, the money is in the left, so I'm going to change my tune. And all of a sudden, out of nowhere, in the early 90s, when he became vice president, because he needed to be able to do something, he grasps onto the green way of living. Now, he doesn't live that way, mind you. He grasps onto it, and he made buku bucks because of it. Now, you might be saying, but Josh, I'm not rich. I'm not Al Gore. There's no one's going to listen to me. And I said, oh, hoo, hoo, hoo. you naive person, you. If you recall, I read the video. The, I did a video on Scott Burns talking about, like, what it was it, uh, investing in a global warming economy. I can't remember what the hell it was. It's stupid. But at the end of the day, Scott Burns, to alleviate his guilt of CO2 production, contributes. Yeah, I think he said what five or six hundred dollars a month or a year to a charity that plants trees. I said, oh man. How awesome is that? And he says basically because these cha these uh, ch this charity is planting trees on his behalf, and they're a, they're a carbon sink, a CO2 sink. It's funny how you know the difference between CO2 and, and uh, carbon monoxide always seems to get overlooked. But whatever, Scott Burns, carbon dioxide and carbon monoxide monoxide are probably the same. But anyway, either way, because he's ignorant. But he says, oh, I'm going to give to this charity 500 bucks a year. So they'll plant trees, they'll offset the amount of uh, mileage I drove back and forth to work for all these many years. <laughs> all right, so let me ask you a question. How hard is it to plant trees? It's incredibly easy, my friends. I think I planted 20 trees on my little property here in Georgia in the last two years. Easy as pie. Some were big. I think I had a couple of 15, 20 gallons. A lot were just sticks that I got from Bob Wells Nursery in uh, Lindale, Texas, wherever that is. But you can find sales. You can probably get five trees for five bucks. Uh, just go to, uh, yeah. I mean, just go to Walmart at the end of the season, pro probably right now. You just go at the end of the season. You can find all these dogwoods. You can find all these apples if you want. You can find all these pears, um, all kinds of various trees. I got a couple mulberries from Bob Wells. I got, I mean, just all kinds of trees. They don't even have to be fruit trees. Just anything you want. And you just plant those suckers in the ground, easy as pie. And then you can tell to the liberals who are very, very guilty. Again, it's kind of like the Catholic guilt. And say, look, don't you worry about your CO2. You can buy carbon offsets by hiring me to plant trees on your behalf. And you can just buy oh, an acre of land up in the, the North Georgia mountains or something like that. Just start planting away. Easy as pie. Best thing about trees is they're very resilient. You get them in the ground. You always want to plant a tree at the end of the fall. Uh, you know, probably right now. Well, I guess right now it feels like fall. I forgot it's January. In Georgia, it feels like fall because of CO2 and global warming. Thus, 
the need for more people to assuage, 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 assuage their guilt by donating to my charity in which I'm going to plant trees uh, for a carbon sink so that way they can continue on their lifestyle. Because remember, carbon offsets are what all the, uh, <laughs> the, the refuge of the scoundrels who believe in the global warming thing, carbon offsets. And I, I think I shared with you this story before. I was on a uh, LinkedIn chat with a guy who is all uh, coming to Morningstar uh, to talk about the sustainability. And he was coming from London, I think. I said, it's interesting how you're coming to Morningstar and you're worried about CO2. How, how are you getting here? Um, you know, taking a train, boat, swimming, bike, and flying, of course. And so I said, huh, that's weird. You're coming to Morningstar and you're bringing your team and you're flying. Uh, how do you justify that? Because I bought carbon offsets. I said, we have you now. I said, let's show us the receipt of that. Let's see how that works. And I didn't expect him to. And it doesn't matter at the end of the day. The facts are you can buy carbon offsets all you want. Theoretically, that doesn't create more CO2, uh, but you still does because if you did not need to buy those offsets, those offsets would have gone to someplace else and you would not have wasted your uh, CO2 offsets and increased the amount of CO2 in the environment. So you know, he's a hypocrite. All these guys are, man. They all are. And they all say a carbon offsets. But that's the catch phrase now for the rich kids who are guilty as sin because of their use of fossil fuels. The catchphrase is offsets. So you create a charity that says, we will allow you to buy carbon offsets by planting trees. And someone like Scott Burns will write about your charity. And I'm sure that charity, whatever it was, carbon.com or something like that, will say, oh, thank you, Scott Burns. And they're gonna get another 150 people donated at 500 bucks a year. And you just buy that little one or two acre land for 5,000 bucks and start planting trees like crazy for every, um, for every hundred bucks you get in, you plant five trees. Oh my goodness. All right. So that's easy. That's how you get rich. It's no different than uh, Al Gore with his, I mean, it's just like that snake in the grass stuff that Al Gore is doing for sure. I mean, we know that Tom Freeman does the same thing. These guys are snakes in the grass. They get on these boards of these companies. Uh, they buy the stocks. They lobby politicians who you and I could never get an audience with. And next thing you know, they're, you know, freaking rich, cheating on their wives and uh, living like freaking kings. All right. All right. So I told you it'd be another way to get rich. Invest in Starksville, Mississippi real estate. Did you know that Mike Leach just become head coach of Mississippi State football? Well, if you look at Mike Leach, he's been a winner wherever he goes because he, he doesn't follow the orthodox of football. I'm telling you right now, Mike Leach going to Mississippi is going to be big for Mississippi State. And those people who buy property down there are going to think about it. Mississippi State. Now, they're going to have a hard time recruiting against Alabama. I get it. Certainly, though, it's going to be easier than Washington State, where Mike Leach was before, to recruit. So, I mean, the facts are the talent in, is in the South for football. We all know that. I mean, there's some talented guys in California. I get you. There's some talented guys in Pennsylvania. I get you. But by and large, the vast majority of the talent is here in the South. So, Mike Leach coming down here. Pfft, Man, coming down to Mississippi State, that's my new team next year. Can't wait to get my Bulldogs gear. And I've been there. I did a pre uh, presentation to a, a MOA group down there, Military Officers Association of America. And I was, I was, I was in love with Starkville. I thought it was fantastic, man. Um, actually, I met, I met a, uh, I, I think she was Vietnamese or, or Thai, I can't remember, an Asian lady. And, uh, and she got her... Uh, PhD or something like that from and she was born and raised right down there and went to Mississippi State and she had a deep accent like she was a first generation like she was she was born in Vietnam or I think it was Vietnam and I said hey what you know what's it like growing up as an Asian with a deep accent in uh in eastern Mississippi and she just said she loved it she loved Mississippi State she said she was treated incredibly kind I mean she was the only Asian they have ever seen so some of them Looked at her kind of like, well, you know, odd because, you know, Mississippi State is blacks and whites. That's it. But she goes, no, it was fantastic. And that's the Deep South for you, man. Everyone thinks the Deep South is full of racist rednecks. It's not at all. It's a bunch of good people who are Christians, who, who are open up themselves. So they'll open up their arms to you. Yeah, there's a history of horrific, horrific action. Name any place in humanity where there's not a horrific, uh, horrific uh, a set of circumstances where people are being abused. 
And uh, the facts are Mississippi is wonderful people. And the fact that Mississippi State, the, the blue collar school, kind of like Virginia Tech for UVA, uh, I just think it's great. So I'm looking forward to, uh, to seeing what Mike Leach can do down there in Mississippi State. And if you want to buy some property down there, it could be profitable. I will right, we'll see you.